Welcome to another experience with Methodist Voices in Word and Song Television Ministry. We are very happy you could join us. Today is the third Lord's Day after Epiphany. The preacher for today is the Reverend I. Michael Llewellyn, and I am Reverend June James, your liturgist. Please have your hymnals and Bibles ready as we celebrate in word. Let us now share in worship. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. The Lord is our light and salvation. In God we find meaning and comfort, and we, are, we need not be afraid. Let God's people shout for joy. Let us rejoice together. For Christ calls us and claims us as his own. Come and worship in unity and love. For God has called us to sing of his amazing love. Let us continue our worship as we sing hymn 134 in the VIP. Jesus shall reign where heir the sun. now have a share in our prayers of adoration and confession. Let us sing softly, Father, we adore you.
God of light and of love, by the waters you walk with us, inviting us into new adventures. In the darkness, you shine your light, guiding us in your path. In the shadows of death, you send your comfort to alleviate our fears, and we know we are not alone. You call us together to be your people and to offer you our praise. So we come to give you the glory that is only due to you. You alone are worthy of our praise. Lord, hear us now as we make our confession to you, remembering your grace, your love, and faithfulness. Softly we sing, create in me a clean heart, O God. Together, let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we often turn from you who call us to be. You call us to follow your way of compassion, but too often we turn to criticism. You call us to follow your way of peace, but too often we are the source of division. You call us to follow your way of trust, but too often we take off on our own, leaving your call behind. Forgive us, O oh God. Unite our will to your will. Help us to cling to your way and strive for your love. Amen. First John 1 verse 9 we read, If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So with this assurance, may Almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's now time for our children and youth focus. Here we have a picture of a fish. And this fish now, fish is a symbol of Jesus and the church. I'm sure you all like fishing. If you have ever caught a fish, you know, it can be very exciting. And fishing is a great sport. But not only is it a great sport, but it's also a means of livelihood for many people across the world who are fishermen. And today, our gospel lesson speaks about a boat, some fishermen, and Jesus. Fishermen have a very difficult job. Sometimes it's not easy. They have to be strong. They have to be very patient. And Jesus called his disciples to be fishers of men. The story is told that one day Jesus was walking along the seashore when he saw two brothers fishing, Peter and Andrew. Jesus knew they made a living by fishing. So he called them, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. Do you know what they did? They laid down their fishing nets and followed Jesus immediately. The fish, a good symbol for the church because it tells us 
that Jesus wants us to call others to him. In times of old, the fish was a symbol for early Christians who were being persecuted because they followed Jesus Christ. And when persons met each other, they would draw the simple symbol of the fish with their toes on the ground. And if the other person was a Christian, they too would draw a fish on the ground so the other person would know that they belong to Jesus. Well, that's one of the reasons why the fish became a symbol because they would draw the fish on the wall and then persons would know that Christians were nearby or this was a meeting place for Christians. So Jesus wants us to fish for people. And it means that Jesus wants us to tell others about what he has done for us and what he wants to do for them. First, the fishermen had to have their nets. And we know that if we want to fish for people, then we need to know that the Bible is our manual. The Bible is our tool. We need to learn the Bible so we can know what Jesus wants us to tell other persons. We know how to share the good news of God's love with other people people. And so we have to be very patient and gentle as we tell others the good news. So if we want to be good fishers of people, as Jesus wants us to be, then we need to be excited, we need to be happy to tell others that Jesus loves them. So today, our verse, your memory verse for today, as you will see at the bottom of your fish, Jesus said, and he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. From Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. This is your memory verse, and I hope you'll take time to learn it at home. And remember that Jesus wants you to be fishers of men. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, you who catch us with your love, help us to tell others about your love, that they too may become your disciples and know what it is to have you to love them. And may they love to serve you all their lives. Hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the choir will now sing with us, I will make you fishers of men. now have the ministry of the word. Let us share the collect together. God of heaven, you send the gospel to the ends of the earth and your messengers to every nation. Send your Holy Spirit to transform us by the good news of the everlasting life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson will be read by Sister Cecile Davis. The Old Testament lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 to 4. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. 
In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nations. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now share with the responsive reading taken from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord, this I seek, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he shall hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help, do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it's now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Amen. The epistle will now be read by Brother Orville Manning, and after the epistle, the gospel lesson will be read for us by Reverend Michael Llewellyn, our preacher. The reading is from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, verses 10 to 18. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by close people that there are no quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. 
For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading is taken from St. Matthew chapter 4, reading from verse 12 to verse 23. Glory to you, O God. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. For those who sat in the region and the shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And as he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother, John, in the boat with their father, Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father, and followed him. Jesus went, in, went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Let us share the hymn 83, Jesus Calls Us All the Tumult, after which the sermon will be preached by Reverend Llewellyn.
Let us pray. Lord, speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of thy tone. As thou hast sought, so let me seek thine erring children, lost and lone. O oh, use me, Lord, use even me just as thou wilt and when and where. Until thy blessed face I see thy rest, thy joy, thy glory share. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Today we want to share with you from Psalm 27. It is indeed a familiar and favorite psalm of many. It has been described as a psalm of triumphant faith. One writer speaks of Psalm 27 also as a psalm of confidence, speaking about confidence in God's ability to bring us through. A psalm of assurance, a psalm of strength, but it is also a prayer. Do you know that this psalm, Psalm 27, speaks about light through darkness and salvation for condemnation and strength for weakness? Yes, a word of comfort and assurance for all, especially as we lead into 2023. Every day we read the newspaper and there are reports of trouble and crisis and difficulty. We look at the television and we see the news and all of that seems to point to the fact that there is difficulty taking place and people you and I, and many more, seem to have challenges, fears one way or another. But the scriptures remind us that we will all have anxieties, but we are to cast our cares, our anxieties on him. We want solutions to our problems. We want answers to anxiety. We, want to look, we are looking for something to relieve us from fear, something to assure us that all will be well, looking for some sort of security that will instill a perfect confidence and peace within us. Some people look for that security in banks. Some seek reassurance in relationships and put their trust in human beings. But none of these are real solutions because none of them offer total security or absolute reassurance. The psalmist in Psalm 27 speaks to victory over fear. And the psalmist answers the important question, how can I have victory over fear? In fact, the theme overarching in Psalm 27 has to do with trust in God. And so the message has to be today, as we go forward in 2023, to trust God. To put our trust in his goodness and mercy. No one else, nothing else. And while, my friends, we do not know when or exactly what was going on in David's mind and life that led him to write this particular psalm, this prayer, many believe that it was at a time when he faced crisis in his life. We note that the psalm opens with a familiar verse, a declaration from David about the confidence he had in God, a declaration speaking about the recognition of the attributes of God. He took his mind off his troubles and he considered the wonder of God's love and faithfulness. David had to say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? In this psalm, we notice that David expressed his personal faith in God. And as he do, does that, he assures us that the Lord is light. And the Lord has salvation. And that the Lord is the stronghold, the strength of his life. Why? Perhaps because of the presence of the Lord in his life. He's not afraid. So with all the challenges of 2023, and as we face the unknown, the possible unknown, what does the psalmist have to say to us? I want to suggest three quick things that could help us as we chart the course for 2023. One, the psalmist reminds us that God can be trusted no matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstances. Why? Because he is light. And he will be our light in times of darkness. The psalmist reminds us that God can take care of us no matter who we are, no matter what we are going through. Why? Because he's the source of our strength, our comfort, and our assurance. And he will lead us and will not forsake us. Of course, as the source of our strength, he provides light. Light when there is darkness. And that light will lead us out of the darkness into his marvelous light. In John chapter 8 and verse 12, Jesus reminds us that I am the light of this world. Yes, he who walks with me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. So if we follow Jesus, who is light, we will walk with him and in his light. He will give, bring light to our lives and light where there is darkness, even at the end of the tunnel. David reminds us further in verse 1 that Jesus, God, is about salvation. Salvation has to do with healing and liberation and redemption and reconciliation. And yes, sin comes into our lives. But we are told in Romans chapter 6 and 23 that the gift of God is eternal life. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, Paul tells us that we are saved by grace through faith, not of works, least no man should boast. So not only light that Jesus provides, he is the way to salvation. And if we want to be saved from our sins, it must be through Jesus Christ. And he further challenges us that he is our stronghold. A stronghold is the place of safety. A place like a rock and a fortress or a hiding place. Psalm 91 and verse 1 reminds us, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So because he is our rock, we can feel safe in him and through him. Because he provides strength for every task that we have. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, Paul writes, I can do all all things through Christ who strengthens me. In Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31, we are reminded that he strengthens those who are weary and weak. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God was with David through the difficulty that he faced. And God can do the same as he delivered David. He can deliver us from all that will and we will encounter throughout 2023. The psalmist asks us, therefore, 
to trust God's goodness and mercy. The latter part of the psalm in verse 15, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. So as we journey in 2023, two things are important, trusting him and wait on him, allow him, God, to direct our path. But then in the second place, perhaps, the psalmist also speaks to us about God leading us in the plain path. Or leading us through the challenges of life. Challenges where situations where life and death and illness and chaos come to us. Many rough patches in our lives. Many times filling us with uncertainty and fear and distress. But we note that he will lead us through the difficulties. And because he will lead us through, we can rest assured that our God is able and capable to do all things. When we look at the life of David, one writer describes it as a suspension bridge. Ups and downs. But notice, the Lord led him through it all by providing light and guidance and direction. God led him through the darkness and chaos into light and brought order to him. Are you going through a challenge of life, my friend? Then hear again what David had to say. Wait for the Lord and let your heart take courage. In Psalm 23, David challenges us to trust in the Lord who is the shepherd and abide in him as he will protect and keep and see you through. Last week or the week before, many have read John chapter 15, where Jesus said to his disciples, Abide in me and I in you, as you cannot be fruitful unless you abide in the vine. If we want to experience God's goodness and light and life in our lives, remember David. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff to comfort me. Yes, we are assured of the presence of the Lord in our lives, because he will lead us. He will lead us because he has been there before. And because he has been there, he will walk us through the challenges, the darkness, and bring light to life. Because he is God. Could I also suggest one final thought? That the psalmist seems to suggest in the reading of Psalm 27 that God never forsake his own. Yes, God will be with us even unto the end of the age. And because of that, the many promises made in Old Testament will come to pass. Yes, we are reminded that enemies are all around us and they are waiting for opportunities to strike, attack, decimate perhaps, and destroy. But God never forsakes his own. And we are assured in Matthew 28 where Jesus says to us, I I am with you always, even until the end of the age. We are assured in God's word that if we trust his ability to deliver and rescue us and save us. The prophet Isaiah in chapter 26 and verse 3 and 4 speaks, quote, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because he trusteth in him. Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord you have an everlasting rock. So David was able to be confident because 
He had a stronghold. God was with him. My sisters and my brothers in Radio Land, my sisters and my brothers, as you listen in, on the varying platforms, remember, storms will blow. But rest assured that he who is our light and our strength in our life will keep you and protect you and preserve you and rescue you. We just must wait on the Lord. David's confidence was spoken from an experience of his life. He faced wild beasts. Remember that? He faced the giant Goliath and won. He faced the persecution of Saul and won. And the nations arrayed against him. But he was never always confident that God was with him. I want to suggest that during 2023, that same confidence can be yours if you put your trust in God's goodness and mercy. As we read the psalm, David expressed his longing of his heart that one thing he will be, one thing from which his confidence grew is the same thing expressed by Paul. Paul writing in Philippians chapter 3 says, one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. He was confident because he spoke about dwelling in the house of the Lord. He was confident because he spoke about beholding the beauty of the Lord. He was confident because he spoke about meditating in the temple of the Lord. By seeking this for his life, David came to know the light and salvation and the refuge, and he was able to put fear aside. So we need to follow the example of David in 2023. John says again, abide in me and I in you. When we abide in God, we will remain and dwell and when we come to Jesus and receive his spirit, we live in him, we dwell in him, and his presence dwell within us. When we come to see and know Jesus, we see God. In John 14, verse 9, he who has seen me has seen the Father. And in beholding Jesus, we are able to become more like him. Yes. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When David sought the Lord, he came to know God. And as such, the light and salvation and refuge, he was able to put his fears aside and triumphed. I put it to us. That that too can be our experience. If we would trust God with our life. To lead us into paths of righteousness. To keep and strengthen us lest we fall and stumble. And to protect us from all harm and danger. As we go forth, remember, no matter what you are going through, my friend, the Lord is at your side. He is your light. And he will lead you from darkness into light. That he is our salvation and will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. That he is our strength and he will give us strength when we are weak. Just trust him. So for 2023, Trust God. The songwriter John Henry Samis, in a, one of his popular hymns, write, Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. The fourth verse reminds us of what God can do in our lives. We must lay everything at him and with him. 
The second verse speaks of when we go through difficulties, he will be there if we only trust him with all that we have. But we never can prove, the songwriter ends, the delight of his love until all on the altar we lay. For the favor he shows and the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey. Is there anyone out there listening to my voice who have not yet put their trust and confidence in this God who is light and salvation? I ask you today to put your hand in his hand and allow this God, our God, to direct all that we shall do for 2023. If you trust him, he will see you through. To his name we give our honor and glory and power and praise. Amen and amen. We give our thanks for Reverend Llewellyn, the message that God put on his heart for us. And we pray that this message will speak to our hearts, not only today, but as we go through this year, let it be a challenge for us to put our faith in God, who is our light and our salvation. We continue our hymn of response is, O Master, let me walk with thee. Number 319 in the Voices in Praise. continue as we affirm our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. We give thanks to all who continue to support this ministry by viewing and participating actively in the televised services. We remind you that this worship experience is designed to engage you in active worship on screen. As such, we ask that weekly, as the hymns are announced and passages are read, you will also use your hymnals and Bibles to stay engaged. Sing, read the scriptures, and pray with us as you are prompted on screen as if you were in physical worship. For your convenience, we share the orders of service used each time with all who will receive. If you are not already on our mailing list, please request the order at main office at jamaicamethodist.org and you will be added. You may also visit the district office website at www.jamaicamethodist.org to download the document. Each Lord's Day at 1.30 p.m., we gather online, and we can make the worship experience more meaningful by resisting the urge to engage in other tasks while we worship, and where possible, to give full attention to God and so receive the blessing reserved for you and your loved ones. We take this opportunity to remind you that the official district council service will be held this afternoon at 4 p.m. and can be seen on the YouTube channel. We are grateful to you for your contribution to this ministry and its upkeep on air. Please make a note of contact details on screen to make your financial contribution to this effort. We do need your support. Let us now give thanks for what we have already received and what we anticipate you will offer for this wonderful work. Let us pray. Gracious God, who provides, we bless your name for your gifts freely given to us. We are ever mindful that we possess nothing. All really belongs to you and that we are merely stewards of these gifts in serving others until you return. So gracious God, we ask your blessing on the gifts we have received. And for those we anticipate, we further ask you to help us to be faithful and teach us to manage these resources to advance the work of your kingdom. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our resurrected Lord and Savior, amen. Let us now share in our prayers of intercession. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray for your church, the family of God, across the world. Give wisdom and encouragement to all ministers, preachers, pastors, teachers, musicians, and leaders in all areas of the church's life and ministry. May all be faithful in their duties and work together to encourage others to come to a saving knowledge of you and become your disciples. Grant that the church may experience a mighty spiritual revival in every place, that the world may be blessed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray especially for the MCCA, whose ministers and leaders are meeting in district councils here in Jamaica and across the region. Pour out your spirit upon them and take control of all their deliberations. May all they say and do bring honor and glory to your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we ask your protection now over our families. Cover them with the precious blood of Jesus and take charge over them. Guard their hearts so that they may only display love instead of hate, anger, and bitterness. We pray especially for quarreling families where the bonds of fellowship have been broken. Efforts at reconciliation have proven difficult and members cannot do it on their own. So we ask, Lord, your Holy Spirit to surround these families with your love and help their relationships to be restored. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the sick, the unemployed, and those suffering distress of any kind. Remember especially victims of violence, injustice, and abuse in all forms, 
and all those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. Comfort them with your presence. Grant them deliverance and healing in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we bring our nation before you, O God. You see and know the many challenges that beset us as a people, spiritually, socially, morally, and economically. Help us, O Lord, as a people to work together to rid Jamaica of crime and violence and the destruction of our environment. We pray for those in authority in all areas of national life. Guide them and grant them wisdom, knowledge, and the courage and will to make decisions and policies that will redound to the positive development of a peaceful country where all can prosper. So gracious God, make your deeds known among us and among people everywhere, that your name may be exalted. This is our prayer, which we offer to you, who are able to do more than we could ever ask or imagine. In Jesus' name we pray. To you, O God, be all honor, glory, dominion, and power, now and forever. Amen. Let us join the choir as they sing the Lord's Prayer. Our closing hymn is Shine, Jesus, Shine. And after the hymn, Reverend Llewellyn will pronounce the benediction.
peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ O Lord and the blessing of God Almighty Father, Son, Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always now and forevermore Amen and Amen